Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna cover how to configure group policy in Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, Windows 10, Windows 11, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so before we move on to the screen recording portion of the video, I did just wanna cover a quick introduction to what group policy is in Windows Server 2025. I wrote this up in case you guys wanted to save this or screenshot it. I'll go ahead and read it on camera now. If you're just getting started with Windows Server, one of the most important tools you'll come across is group policy. Group policy is a feature that allows IT administrators to control and manage the working environment of user accounts and computer accounts within Active Directory. With it, you can enforce security settings, configure software installations, control desktop environments, and much more, all from a central location. Group policy works through something called group policy objects or GPOs. These GPOs are sets of rules or configurations that get applied to users or computers based on their location in the Active Directory hierarchy. When a computer or user logs in, Windows checks what policies apply and applies those rules automatically. The system is incredibly useful for keeping settings consistent across multiple computers, improving security, and saving time. In the rest of the video, I'll show you how to access and configure group policy on Windows Server 2025 step by step. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so in Server Manager, clicking down to the local server, I can see the domain indigosoftware.com. Note that this is actually different from our actual company domain where we offer our products. That would be indigosoftwarecompany.com. Uh, but the point is to show you that I'm logged in as a domain controller and I have administrator privileges. And this is the first step that will allow us to configure group policy. So once we're here, we can simply access tools in the top right. And let's click into group policy management right here. You may or may not see some of these menus already visible. It may look something like this and simply click these little tiny arrows here and then under domains and we have our domain here. We can use these little drop down arrows to show or hide. This is going to give us access to our group policy objects. Now, once we're here, we can click to group policy objects, simply double click, or again, use the drop down arrow. Here, we're gonna find our default policies. So these are our group policy objects. And as we can tell by the folder hierarchy, each policy is linked to the domain object shown here. This means that it's going to apply to all accounts and users within the Active Directory. We can see under domain controllers, we have the default domain controllers policy, which is linked to the OU. And it's very straightforward to create a new group policy object. So if we just right click in here, we can see the option for new. Let's go ahead and hit new. And then I just entered a corp workstation baseline uh, source starter GPO is there are no other options available until we create it. So for now I'll press okay. Next up, we're gonna enable loopback so that the settings follow the computer. So let's go right click on this and we'll click edit. All right, and I'll just expand this so we can see a little bit better, maybe drag out this window a little bit. For this, we'll need to go to policies, administrative templates, and again, this is under computer configuration. Next up, we'll go down to system right here. So again, we click the drop down under system. And then finally, we're looking for group policy. We're gonna scroll down here inside of all of these various settings. Now we're looking for a specific setting here we can see it's highlighted, it's about maybe two thirds of the way down. Uh, what we're looking for is configure user group policy loopback processing mode. We'll double click into this. And then from here, we'll go enabled. And instead of replace, I'm gonna select merge. Loopback essentially makes your user settings apply based on which PC they're signed into. This is great for kiosks, labs, or standardized workstations. From here, I'll hit apply and I'll hit okay. All right, and then if I wanna close down the group policy management editor, I can simply X out of this and we're back to where our GPO is inside of the group policy objects folder. One thing I might want is to, for the computers in my domain to auto log off after 15 minutes of inactivity. That is very standard in an environment like this. Let me show you how you would go about configuring that. We'll go back into edit. Again, I'll maximize this and drag this so we can see it a little bit more. So again, we're gonna to go to computer configuration and policies. Here, let's go into Windows settings. We'll go to security settings, local policies, and security options. So now we have a new list of policies under security options here. We're looking for interactive logon, which we can see a bunch of options here. And then we wanna see machine activity limit. So right here we can see interactive logon machine and activity limit. 
we can define this policy settings. And since this is currently in seconds, if for example, I wanted 15 minutes, that would be 900 seconds. So let's go ahead and apply that. And then you can press OK. Another setting I may want to configure is, for example, blocking USB storage. So let's start over back at computer configuration. We'll click underneath policies once again. We'll go to administrative templates. From here, we'll go into system. And then under system, we're looking for removable storage access, which we can see down here. Here we can see something called all removable storage classes deny all access. This is the policy that we want. So we'll double click into that to edit and we'll set this to enabled. We'll hit apply on that and we'll hit okay. Note that what we just did is a very broad policy to have in place. And we could always make exceptions or further configure this based on our own environment. All right, so for the next part of this demonstration, let's go ahead and configure some of our user policies. So just to recap at the computer configuration level, any policies will affect the operating system when it's turned on. Whereas user configuration, the policies will be specific to which user is logged in. So that's the separation here. We're gonna go ahead and configure some things in the user configuration now. First thing I may wanna do is a corporate wallpaper. For this, let's go down to policies. We'll go to administrative templates, desktop, click desktop again. And here we can see desktop wallpaper. We're gonna set this to enabled. We have a little text input box here for wallpaper name. Basically, we would want to store a wallpaper image file somewhere that everyone has access to. And then we need to enter a UNC path here is what we would recommend. And so it looks something like this. So for example, for me, that would be my domain followed by sysvol and then domain again, branding wallpaper. So that's like an example of a file path you could create and then link your wallpaper to for everyone to use. Just to take this a step further here, I've typed in the path here, C windows sysvol and then sysvol again. And here we have our domain. And inside of here, for example, we might create a new folder called branding and then include our actual wallpaper file in here. So just to take that a step further, this is kind of where we would create our file inside of our domain controller and then using the UNC path to link it here. Now, one more quick note here. If you guys wanna find your UNC path for a file that's inside of your server, uh, we can right click on any folder and we'll hit properties. Here we can see our local path. If we want the UNC path, we can click to sharing. Uh, and then here we have our network path. If we click share, and then here we can see our network path. Uh, if I click advanced sharing, share this folder, add the name and apply. There we have our UNC path, right? So I could take that and then, you know, paste it into the UNC path here. Uh, we'll hit apply on that and we'll hit OK. Another thing we might want to do under user configuration is to map a shared network drive. So we can do that directly within the group policy management editor as well. We'll go down to preferences and windows settings and then clicking into drive maps here. We can right click anywhere here, hover over new and we'll select mapped drive. Here we have a map drive that I want to copy the location of. So we'll again do what we did earlier. Right click properties. OK, and then once we create a new drive, we want the action to stay as update. All right. And then I entered a location here. I'm going to go ahead and check by reconnect. And then for the drive letter, I'll go ahead and use Z. Uh, everything else is OK for now. I'll hit apply and I'll hit OK. Now clicking into the map drive here and going to the common tab, let's check next to item level targeting and then click targeting there. I can click new item and I'm going to go with a security group. OK, and then here I'll go ahead and check my security group. Let's say, for example, I have a security group called marketing. I'll add that. OK, and then I can press OK, apply and OK again. This is to show you guys preferences and item level targeting. All right, we're just going to show you guys a few other basic configurations that we can make. Again, following our demonstration for the workstation baseline for a new hire. The first thing I wanted to show you guys is to set a welcome logon banner. This is something we may want to do, and we'll find this in computer configuration and policies. Once we're in policies, let's go to Windows settings then security settings. And in here, we're going to see local policies. And then once we're here, let's click into security options. And we're looking for interactive logon. So again, we had a setting that we had configured earlier to log users off after 15 minutes. For this one, we're looking for message title for users attempting to log on. And there are actually two policies for this to start the first one. And we can define this policy setting in the template. For example, we may want to type a message such as welcome to Indigo Software Company. OK, we'll hit apply and we'll hit OK again for the interactive logon below. We'll paste that and there we go. The last one that we're going to show you is and this relates to some security hardening and we're going to show you guys how to prevent command prompt access. 
So this one again is under user configurations. We'll go to policies. We'll go to administrative templates. We'll go to system. Here we have prevent access to the command prompt set to no by default or not configured. And let's just set this to enabled and we'll hit okay. Now, if we wanna verify that our group policy changes have taken effect, uh, we can go ahead and open up our command prompt, right click run as administrator, and we're gonna type the simple command gp update forward slash force and we'll press enter. This is gonna update our policy for us. Here we can see that the user policy update has completed successfully. All right, so that was just a quick demo of how you can go about creating and configuring group policy objects in Windows Server 2025. Let us know in the next video if you'd like for us to go deeper into specific policies like security hardening or advanced user settings. Now, as a quick reminder, you can always try some of the various configurations in a lab environment, and this may help you to experiment and get familiar with how this editor works and how you can apply and use different policies. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to know what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.